Welcome, pilots of part 4 of the Air Nation Guide for War Thunder. In this episode, we'll be going over Italy and France. Parts 1, 2, and 3 are linked below if you haven't watched them yet. The Italian air tree is one of the most enjoyable and also one of my personal favorites in the game. It features lots of competitive fighters as well as some useful ground strikers and interceptors. Its leader props are also some of the most dangerous in the game and their jets are quite unique. Is it worth a grind though? Let's take a look. The tree is divided into forward lines, consisting of two fighter lines, a closer support slash interceptor line, and a bomber line. Italian fighters usually focus on agility and firepower. Excluding the British and Japanese, the turn rates on Italian fighters can compete with most other planes. A lot of them also feature plenty of cannons and ammo, making them quite destructive. Starting it off, we have tiers 1 and 2. Just like any other nation, there's nothing out of the ordinary early on, just some biplanes and early monoplanes. Late tier 2 and early tier 3 is where it gets interesting though. In the first fighter line, you'll find the Regina series of planes with the RE-2001s. These two have some great maneuverability given the Spitfires are run for their money. The CN variant also carries two 20 mils with meaning issues rounds, although they are limited in ammo. They're also pretty fragile, so avoid head-ons and such. Overall though, they're pretty good turn fighters, which means they're both easy and fun to use. In the second fighter line, you'll find the early C202s. These planes will be your bread and butter at the early tiers, having both respectable top speeds and climb rates. Agility isn't terrible, but you will get outperformed by a good number of opponents. Booming and zooming is the way to go with these two, and with the 20 most EC has, you'll have no trouble taking care of enemies. Next up in the cast line, we have a strong lineup, the Ju-87 D3, SM-91, and the SM-92. The Stuka is just like its German counterpart, with plenty of payload, but not the greatest flight performance. It'll serve you well in lower tier ground battles, just watch out for enemy anti-aero fighters. The SM-91 is a more versatile plane though. This beast of a machine has 6 offensive 20 mils as well as a defensive 20 mil in the rear. It also gets an air spawn and a surprisingly good turn rate. It's a great interceptor and a boom and zoomer, and it's also one of my personal favorite planes in the game, so make sure to give it a shot. The SM-92 on the other hand is similar, albeit slightly worse, with only 320 mils and a couple of 50 gals. It can also be used in the same style as its predecessor, but interception is recommended. These two can also carry quite good payloads as well, making them quite versatile. Give them both a shot and see which one you like best, although I definitely recommend the 91. Next up are the bombers. Italian bombers can be a bit of a swing and a miss. Their defensive armament isn't the best and they have relatively small payloads. Their ranges are also not that great, making them quite slow. The P-108 Serie 1 is sort of viable, but other bombers of these tiers are a lot better. Overall, not the best bombers, but you might find some enjoyment out of them. Now we reach tiers 3 and 4, which features some of the best planes in the Italian air tree. In the first fighter line, we see the G55s and the G56. These three are some of the most notorious planes of these tiers, with some decent flight performances, powerful armament, and some strong engines. The two G55s are almost identical, their only difference being their firepower. The Sato Series 0 has a lot of 50 cals, while the Series 1 focuses more on 20 mils. Unlike the Japanese guns, the Italian 50 cals are quite weak, but the 20 mils pack quite a punch and have lots of ammo. Performance wise, they play a sort of like a more agile BF-109 that can't climb as well. Booming and zooming should be your strategy. As for the G56, it's the pride of the Italian Air Force. The Super Centauro has a very powerful engine, great firepower, excellent maneuverability, and decent top speed. It can be used in a variety of playstyles, but it excels as a boom and zoomer at high altitudes. You can usually outturn your opponents, but watch out for British or Japanese fighters. You should get to around 5km in altitude and dive on unsuspecting enemies. Next up is the second fighter line with the C205s and the BF-109 G14. The N2 and Series 3 variants of the C205 are pretty much identical, both having decent firepower, turn rates, energy retention, and engines. They're a pretty versatile aircraft, being good at both boom and zooming and turn fighting. As for the BF-109 G14, it's a superb boom and zoomer. The climb rate of the 109 is wild by few, and combined with the great energy retention and firepower, it can be a very dangerous aircraft in the hands of a good pilot. Turn fighting is not a strong suit though, so avoid getting into dogfights. Keep your altitude high and wipe out enemies below you. Last but not least is the cast line with the P-47. As I mentioned before in this series, the P-47 is one of the best ground strikers of these tiers. With lots of rockets and heavy bombs, you can wipe out a good number of enemy tanks and defend the skies if needed. All in all, it's a top-notch plane for its role, and it'll probably be your go-to cast until rank 5. And now we reach tiers 5 and 6. Starting off with the first fighter line, you'll see some foreign designs, which all have their own playstyles. The Vampire is the great turn fighter, but it lacks an engine power. The CL-13 is more of a situational plane, excelling as a support fighter while also having a decent turn rate. And as for the F-86K, it's also suited better as a support fighter. The Saber Dog is slower, less nimble, and heavier than most other planes it faces, but it packs a good punch and has a decent engine. Try all three of these planes and see which one suits you. 
In the second fighter lane, we see the homemade Italian designs with the G91 and Sagittario 2. The early G91s are best used for air supremacy with a great maneuverability and engine performance. Lacking in both heavy firepower and payload, you should focus on enemy fighters and not much else. Being a support or return fighter should be your main priority. The Sagittario 2 takes the agility of the G91 and amplifies it tenfold. This little thing can outturn pretty much all of the jets it faces, making it a very fun plane to use. It also carries two high velocity 30 mils, which can rack up kills with sharp bursts. Its ammo is limited though, and it bleeds energy and sustained dogfights, so play smart, keep your speed up, and wipe out the enemy team. Back to the G91s, you'll find the Y and YS variants. Compared to the earlier models, these two are less agile but feature bigger weapons and better engines, and that's about it really. These two aren't really that great, especially with the frequent up tiers they get. They perform sort of like sabers with afterburners, but with more powerful guns and at a higher BR. I don't recommend either of these, even though they look really nice. And as for the cast line, you'll find the F-84s. The F-84G is a pretty solid strike aircraft with some powerful bombs and rockets. It also has a pretty decent flight performance for its BR, so make sure to give it a shot. The F-84F, though, is pretty mediocre. Unlike the G variant, it doesn't fly that well, but it is still decent for ground support. It can carry up to 8,000 pounds of bombs and a variety of rocket loadouts, which improve very useful in ground battles. Finally, we reach tiers 7 and 8. From here on, all the planes are based on foreign designs. Starting off with the first fighter line, we have the F-104s. The Italian starfighters, much like their American counterparts, have a single play style. Climb, dive, kill, and climb back up. The flying pencils don't have any maneuverability to speak of, but their engines are quite powerful. If an enemy gets on your tail, just simply fly away. It might not be the most riveting gameplay out there, but it'll keep you alive. The better the variants, the better and more missiles you can get, with AIM-9Bs, Js, Ls, as well as some sparrows later on. They can also carry some decent payload options, so you can use them for bombing or ground striking as well. After you're done with all the starfighters, you'll reach your grand prize, the F-16. As we've said many times before, the F-16 is currently one of the best planes in the game. Great engine, maneuverability, and weapons. This is the air defense fighter variant though, so it can only carry missiles without the 6 AM-9 Elsas and Sparrows. Overall, it's a top-notch air supremacy fighter, and it's probably the best plane in the Italian air tree. Aside from the SN-1. Next up, we have the two remaining lines, with the Tornadoes and the AV-8B. The Tornadoes are decent for ground striking, but air combat isn't their strong suit. The IDS variant features up to 13,000 pounds of bombs, enough to wipe out a number of bases in air battles. It also features two AIM-9Ls for self-defense. The ADV variant can only carry missiles with up to four AIM-9Ls as well as four sky flashes. Don't let that fool you though, when engaging in air combat, it should only be used as a support fighter, not on the front lines. Keep your distance from four belts and help your allies. The IDS variant should avoid enemies altogether. As for the AV-8B+, well, it's a Harrier. Not much maneuverability, alright engines, plenty of payload and thrust vectoring. It's a decent plane for ground support missions with some friendlies backing you up. On its own though, it'll get picked off due to its lackluster flight performance. It can carry 4 AIM-9Ms however, and its thrust vectoring can improve its agility if used properly. It is best to limit your air combat and stick to either supporting or ground striking. And now for the pros and cons. Italian mid-tier fighters are some of the best in the entire game, with some great flight performances and weapons. Speaking of, most Italian planes have plenty of cannons with lots of ammo, which means you can take care of enemies quite easily. The fighters also have some decent agility, and while not at the same level as the British or Japanese, they can still hold their own in a dogfight. Now for some of the negatives though. The first con is that the Italian jets aren't the best. Tier 5 is still alright, but tier 6 to 8 just don't have the same strength as some other nations. The fact that tier 7 is nothing but starfighters does not help. The playstyle of the Italian air tree is also pretty limited, being primarily focused on air supremacy. Ground striking is still viable, but the majority of the tree is focused on that specific playstyle. If you like that, it can also be a good thing, but some variety never hurts. And lastly, the bombers, or lack thereof. The bomber line stops at tier 3, and while most people probably don't care, it is still worth mentioning. Next up is the conclusion. The Italian air tree is pretty beginner friendly with their easy to use but hard to master planes. Their decent flight performances and the abundance of ammo can be quite handy for newer players. As for roles, Italian planes are mainly focused on air supremacy with some interceptors and cats also included. Naval striking and bombing are obviously not the best. And as for the ranks, Italian planes are best between tiers 1 and 4. The fighters at these tiers are a joy to play and once you learn how to properly use them they can be very effective. Tier 5 is still decent but tiers 6 and 7 aren't that great. It does get better with the F-16 at rank 8 though. And lastly, should you play the Italian air tree? If you're a beginner, it's a pretty decent choice. As I've said, the planes are easy to use and they get plenty of firepower. If you're looking for a new nation to grind, I highly recommend it. If you've never played the G55s, the G56, or the SM-1, you're missing out, that's all I'm saying. And if you just want to have some fun, Italy is a solid choice. Some recommendations of the Super Centaur and the SM-91. Man, I love the SM-91. Such a good plane. Ah!
Ah, the French air tree. Beloved by a few, hated by many, and skipped by most. The tree is definitely not the most conventional, but it features some great planes, as well as some interesting playstyles. Will it suit you though? Well, that's what we are here to find out. The French air tree is uh, quite a mixed bag. It consists of two fighter lines, a strike aircraft line and a bomber line. Until rank 3, nearly all the planes are domestic designs, but afterwards though, almost half the planes are American or British exports. And the entirety of tier 4 is nothing but foreign planes, mon dieu. The tier 5 and onwards is luckily more national though, with only a handful of export jets. Starting off, we have tiers 1 and 2. Much like the Japanese, the French Air 3 lacks biplanes. Instead, featuring a variety of monoplanes. Tier 2 is a bit more sophisticated though. Here you'll find some more semi-competent aircraft in more defined roles. The first line of fighters, you'll find a variety of planes from different manufacturers. Their flight performances are about what you'd expect for these tiers, decent maneuverability and not much speed. What stands out is their firepower. They all feature 7.5mm machine guns as well as a single Hispano. The MGs are weak but have quite a large amount of ammo. The cannons on the other hand only have a small amount but they can be devastating at your steers. This can be a decent opportunity to practice your aim and get a hang of air battles. Dexop is a second fighter line with the Potez aircraft and the F6 F5. The Potez 630 is definitely one of the planes of all time, with 220 mils of very limited ammo and a defensive turret. If you bother researching the 631 though, it's got a much bigger arsenal. You're better off skipping those interceptors and playing the F6 F though. This tried and true design features 650 cals and some decent flight performance. On top of that, it can carry a torpedo, tiny teams or a 2000 pound bomb. This plane can be a great introduction to naval aircraft if you've never played them before. And you can bring it out in air, ground or naval battles. In the strike aircraft line, you'll find the A35B and the MB175T. The A35 is rather slow and a heavy ground attacker, with uh, not much flight performance to speak of, but featuring a decent payload of up to 1000 pounds of bombs. It can be a good plane to bring ground battles, although the F6F is a better choice. Similarly, the MB is also quite large, but it's actually better off as an attacker. While it can carry a torpedo, you can use its front facing 20 mils to intercept enemy ground strikers or bombers. And lastly, the bomber line with the NC223.3 and the Leo. Hmm, that, that, that name sounds familiar. Hmm. These two are pretty much the opposite of each other. The NC being a large strategic bomber and the Leo is a more nimble tactical bomber. They both feature some decent payloads being up to 3700 and 1900 kilograms respectively. The NC is quite slow and not maneuverable, but it can easily wipe out bases in air battles. The Leo is decently maneuverable, but its defensive weapons and overall durability isn't the best. They are decent for air and ground battles respectively. Next up are tiers 3 and 4. Here you'll find a bigger variety in planes, with a mix of French, American and British designs. Starting off with the first fighter line, we have the VB-10 C1, the VB-10 O2 and the Seafire Mark II. The VB aircraft are rather large twin-engine interceptors with a lot of firepower. The C1 variant features 4 Hispanos, while the O2 has an additional 650 cals. Dogfighting is a bad idea however, as maneuverability isn't a strong suit. Get some altitude, dive on your targets and get back up, or intercept enemy bombers. The Seafire is a lot more versatile though, with great maneuverability and still decent firepower. With 2 Hispanos and 4 Brownings, it's a decent jack of all trades. But it performs best at dogfighting. In the second fighter line, we have the MB-156 and a bunch of American designs. 
The MB looks and plays similarly to the Lovjkin and the Fokker Wolf aircraft. It has great top speed and energy retention, making it an excellent boom and zoomer, but be aware, it only gets 60 rounds per cannon. So much like the Voshkins, you need to keep your ammo in check. The American exports, on the other hand, have no trouble whatsoever with ammunition nor weapons. All three of these planes are excellent for boom and zoom tactics with decent climb rates, dive speeds and energy retention. The F6F5N is the good old Hellcat with bigger weapons and a source raider. The King Cobra is a great jack of all trades and the Barkett is quite a heavy hitter. They can all carry impressive payloads with bombs up to 3000 pounds, a bunch of HVARs and tiny Tims, and even a torpedo on the Hellcat. Remember though, dogfighting is not our forte, so stick to boom and zooming and rack up some kills. Next up is the Strike Aircraft line. We have a couple of Nevo Strikers. Starting it off, there is the SB2C5. The Helldiver is a very slow aircraft, but it features quite a variety of payload options, with a torpedo, rockets, gun pods, or even up to 2000 pounds of bombs. Stay out of enemy guns and wreak havoc on ground or naval targets. The 84 and the F4U7 perform much better in the sky store, with 4 20 mils and decent top speeds. As for the payload, there are some of the best at those tiers. Featuring a variety of high explosive and heat rockets, up to 3000 pounds of bombs and a torpedo on the sky radar. These two are excellent to bring out in mid to high tier in ground or naval battles, so give them a shot if that's what you're looking for. And lastly are the bombers. All these planes feature plenty of ordnance, with up to 4800, 4400, 8000 and 14000 pounds respectively. Their defensive weapons get better and better with each variant. They are quite large planes though, so a couple of bursts from enemy cannons can be devastating. They are not exactly agile planes either, so you're gonna have to watch where you fly. If you use them carefully though, they can wipe out plenty of bases in air battles. And now we arrive at tiers 5 and 6 with the early jets. Starting it off is the first fighter line with the MD450, the 452, as well as the Mister 4A. The MDs have some weaker engines when compared to other jets, but their maneuverability is very decent. They can also maintain their energy pretty well and have some great armament, so boom and zoom is a solid choice. The Mister is a bit of a disappointment though, uh, with not much acceleration, poor energy retention and mediocre maneuverability. <laughs> It does feature 30mm defac cannons though, and some decent payload, so you might find some luck in ground battles. Next up is the second fighter line with the Vautour 2N and the F-86K. These two are built for intercepting and supporting, so their maneuverability is pretty much non-existent. As such, you should employ boom and zoom tactics and stay clear of the front line. The Vautour 2N is an interceptor variant of bomber design, with incredible acceleration and top speeds. On top of that, it also features some alright missiles and devastating defa cannons, so taking out enemies should be no problem. Intercepting, or BNZ, is recommended and avoid dogfighting at all costs. As for the Saber Dog, it is best used as a support fighter with its subpar maneuverability, but decent top speed, acceleration and firepower. It also features two AIM-9B missiles, which can be useful, but avoid 1v1s and support your allies. And now we reach the close support line with the F-84s and the F-100. For the umpteenth time, the F-84s are great for ground support with lots of bombs and rockets. The G variant performs well as a support fighter while the F variant is lacking in flight performance. They're both good choices for ground battles though. The F-100 is a lot more competent against planes but excels at combined arms. With up to 4500 pounds of bombs and some powerful rockets, it can wreak havoc on the battlefield. It's also quite fast and can carry sidewinders, making it a decent support fighter if need be. And lastly, the bomber line, with the Vautour et the Etendard. Much like the interceptor variants, the Vautour have some incredible acceleration and top speeds. They're comparable to the IL-28, so spawn in, rush the enemy base and run back. 
without any offensive or defensive armament, you'll need to be extra careful around enemies. Thanks to your outstanding engines though, running away shouldn't be a problem, as long as they don't have any missiles. The Eton Dar, on the other hand, are much more versatile. On top of bombs, these two planes feature Defa cannons, side windows, lots of rockets, air 2 ground guided missiles, and a ballista computer for bombs and rockets. They're viable to bring in ground battles, and they can also hold their ground if attacked by an enemy. The Super Eton Dar features a upgraded radar, countermeasures, and the option to carry guided bombs and the Magic 1 missile, which we'll get into a bit. Overall, these two are great choices for the ground support role. And lastly are tier 7 and 8. In the first fighter line, you'll find the Mirage line of fighter jets. All of the models are great for multi-role operations, with great missiles, maneuverability and payload options. The first two models, the 3C and the F1C, are better suited as support fighters in air battles, due to their mediocre engines. They can also excel in ground battles thanks to their big variety of payload options, such as bombs, rockets and air-to-air -air missiles. Avoid direct confrontation with enemy fighters and support your allies. The Mirage 2000s are much more competent though, with improved engines and flight performances. Thanks to their delta wings, these two planes can turn very sharply at the cost of a lot of speed. At lower speeds though, it suffers pretty badly, so keep your energy high at all times. Thankfully, their engines are pretty powerful, so you can regain speed relatively quickly. As their missiles, they can carry the infamous Magic 2, as well as the Super 530, which can be an incredibly effective tool at short ranges. They can't carry too many of them though, only up to 4 missiles per plane, so use them sparingly. If you run out of missiles, using your main guns are also a viable option, with the very powerful Deva 30 mils that all of these planes get. They are very limited in ammo as well, with only 130 rounds per gun. The C5S and the 5A variants are quite similar. The main difference is that the C5S is mainly for air combat, while the 5F has a variety of payload options, along with the much better radar. Try them both out and use them according to your needs. Next up in the second fighter line is the F8E. Much like its American counterpart, this plane is not the best jet out there. It's not the fastest, it can't turn the sharpest, it can't carry any payload, and most important of all, it has no countermeasures, which is a death sentence at this battle rating. It can carry some powerful missiles, but in very limited numbers, only two per plane. If you don't know what you're doing, it's best to skip this plane. Now we move on to the cast line with the Mirage 5F and the Mirage F1 CT. These two are quite similar to the Mirages in the fighter line. They are almost identical in fact, the 5F and the 3E and the F1 CT to the F1 C. They're good for ground battles or as support fighters. That's pretty much it. Enjoy this footage of this plane being blown up. And lastly, the bomber line. Here you find some actual strike aircraft, namely the Jaguar A and the Mirage 2000 DR1. Both of these planes are decent for ground support with up to 3200 kilograms and 5000 pounds of bombs, plenty of rockets, air to ground missiles and guided bombs. Once they drop their payload, they can be used as support fighters, although it is not recommended. They can defend themselves if needed though, with some decent missile loadouts and plenty of countermeasures. Try these two out if you need some cash at top tier tank battles. And now the pros and cons. The French Air 3 consists of great cast planes that are capable of both ground and naval striking. If you're also grinding the ground or naval trees, this can be a massive help. The majority of those planes are American designs, which, funnily enough, are some of the best parts of the French Air 3. That is bullshit, by the way. SK Dogger, you always shut the fuck up. There, vous êtes in sad for. Lastly, the French top tier jets are very competent with the Mirage 2000 series. They have great engines, missiles and turn rates. As for the cons though, there are a fair few. The domestic planes in the tree are by far some of the worst and until you reach tier 3, you might have some difficulty getting through the tree. Once you're done with tier 4, you'll also be greeted with some eh, mediocre jets. The Mysteres and the early Mirages are definitely not for everyone and they require a specific playstyle to be used effectively. Now, the conclusion. The French Air 3 is definitely not the most beginner friendly out there, with the grants up to tier 3 being pretty difficult. The planes later on in 3 require some getting used to, so it's not the best for beginners. As for roles, the French Air 3 excels in ground and naval striking, as well as bombing. 
Air supremacy and interception are a bit lacking. And while there are a couple of hidden gems, the tree doesn't contain much of them. Most of the fighters are better as support, rather than being on the front line. For the tiers, the tree has its ups and downs. Like I mentioned before, tiers 1 and 2 are not the best. But it gets much better at tiers 3 and 4 with the foreign exports. Tier 5 through 7 are a bit rough with early jets, but picks up with the top tier models. And lastly, should you play the French Air Tree? If you're a beginner, not recommended. Like it's been mentioned many times before, the early tiers are not great and the overall tree isn't meant for beginners. If you're looking for a new nation to grind though, it's an okay choice. If you're willing to struggle up the ranks, you'll be rewarded with some great top tier jets. The mid tiers will also be a good place to grind. And after you're done with the tree, you might also get a new perspective of life after all the pain you've just endured. But if you just want to have some fun, the French Air Tree is decent. But the most fun is the American planes, so you might as well play the original versions. Some recommendations are of course the F6, F5 and the AD4. And so, that was it for me, Leo. I hope you all enjoyed uh, my French accent. And if anybody dares to complain about my French accent again in the comments below, I will personally come to your fucking house, I will find it and I will ram a baguette up your ass.